Another question I have is, okay, so for Doug, because you were basically a talent coordinator also, especially in the earlier years in Vancouver, towards the, at the end of the 80s, you were always, how did you wrangle up and find the talent? Like, I know you, and Scott McNeil especially was, had always says that you're the one that found, he, you found him or he found you, and then that's just kind of how it all snowballs from there. How do you, how did you find all, you know, find people? Like, wh what do you, where do you go to find the talent that you know Oh, they can be a voice actor. They can do this kind of thing. We we did a lot of what we call cattle calls in those days, where we did, we would just bring in hundreds of people and whip through it, and then do a call back for for the ones that kind of made it through. And that's how we found a lot of people is through a a cattle call. I remember the day Don Brown came into a, a huge cattle call with them. Um, there were like three or four of us in different booze and the old little mountain sound mm. and uh, we were all just just going through trying to find new talent and uh, um, someone came up to me and said I got this guy in the studio I don't know if he's really good or really bad because <laughs> he was just so over the top and amazing right and I went yeah yeah we're bringing him back <laughs> and, and I'm uh, glad but, you did because but I did a, um, amazing I did, uh, one of the first things we did was this giant workshop called, I called it Heavens to Murgatroyd. And we just said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's right. And uh, animation's coming to Vancouver. We need lots of voice actors. Uh, come and take this uh, workshop and, and hear what it's all about. And that's where guys like Scott and Lee and uh, um, Sam Cooth, even a few others, just sort of heard about it and came, and they saw, saw that, and listened to everything we had to say, came to the cattle call, and just you know, front of the line immediately. You know, they were those guys were you know we were looking for those guys and those guys um, and gals. I can't I didn't remember I didn't mention any uh, girls' names that came through out of that. But uh, well, it's got who's um, oh my god, now her name's escaping me. Oh my god, what's her name? She basically, she got, remember when you're in Vancouver, she got sick and it's like the industry shut down. Oh, that's, well, that's Tabitha, Bar, Tabitha, Tabitha Janice, all, the, all these people, yeah. Yeah, she's, she was always one of my idols. But yeah, there's a lot of talent in Vancouver, a lot of really good talent. And they, and they keep getting newer, really good new talent too, like in the newer projects I've been yeah. seeing, like they keep finding them all over the place, like especially like in the later seasons of My Little Pony, like they just kept finding new and oh, new yeah. and new people. It's amazing and they were when great. you think how many how many women were on that. I did a quest year girls, but I never I never got a My Little Pony. But and Sue Blue and I did some workshops together as well, where again you know like hundred people uh, doing uh, you know we, you know, part of it was auditions, as you know, mock auditions we would do just to just to try to discover new talent. And, and guys like Gary, Gary is a mentor in the industry and he, he helped a lot of people get going. And there, there's a lot of mentors in Vancouver that really helped build it. All to right, uh, my detriment, because, you know, my biggest competition wherever I go to audition is Scott McNeil, Lee Tokar, <laughs> Brian Dobson. Uh, oh, the Dobson the other Brian, The other Brian. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. Big hand for our guests. Amazing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>